chapter 18 verse 1 and he speak a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Hindrances to the lifestyle of prayer is what we intend to take out of the way before we step out of this month. Hindrances to the lifestyle of prayer. We have as an objective identifying factors that hinder effective and productive prayer. In fact, factors that hinder the lifestyle of prayer. Most people know about prayer and they know about praying but not everybody prays. Few people pray and of the few people that pray few people pray effectively and productively. Very few. The reason is, there are factors that hinder effective prayer. Those are the factors we want to list, to list out today. What are the things that hinder praying? What is it that makes a person lazy in prayer? Or not pray at all. Number one is the attitude of self sufficiency. The attitude of self sufficiency. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. Second Corinthians 3. Four to five, and such trust and such trust. Have we through Christ to God world? Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. So it is possible to be self-sufficient what do we refer to in this case? First, it is the confirmation of independence of God. Where a person confirms his or her independence of God. It is a situation, secondly, where people assume that things happen for them by chance. 
they conclude that their results happened on their own. The attitude of self-sufficiency first is a confirmation of independence of God. Second, it is the situation where people assume that things happen for them by chance. That is, not, God and nobody was responsible. It just happened for them because they are them. Third, it is a situation where people... Where people assume that their gifts, abilities, and resources are responsible for their results. They just assume that anywhere they went in life was by hard work, by education, by learning. By human connection. So they become self-sufficient. And there is no need for prayer. But that is an error. Because self-sufficiency leads to sudden disaster. That was what Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 to 6 said. He said, thus said the Lord, cost is the man who trusted in himself. He trusts in man. Man that trusts man means man who trusts in himself. He maketh flesh his arm. He's relying on flesh. His heart departs from the Lord. He said, that man is cursed. For he shall be like the heath in the desert. And shall not see when good cometh. And shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness. In a salt land and not inhabited. I think you should handle that echo. It's too much tonight. Echo. The attitude of self sufficiency If you go to the Western world, you see a lot of people who don't think there is any need for God. No need for God. Everything is attributable to science. Attributable to things. Everything. Until COVID-19 mesmerized the science. And useless the economies and show to the world that there is something beyond God, even though it is actually or practically or literally, or let me say almost a scandemic or pandemic. Sorry, pandemic. I mean, in time to, as, as the days go by, to be unveiled more and more that it was a scam, sorry, pandemic. No, sorry, pandemic. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's pand pan pl pandemic. Check your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Self, the attitude of self-sufficiency, that is number one. I believe you don't have it. You don't need to have it. So you don't introduce, you don't invite that curse of Jeremiah, of the man who believes he's responsible for himself. Number two is the arrival mentality. The arrival mentality. Revelation chapter 3 and in verse 16 to 17. He says, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Why? Because you say, I am rich. I have increased in goods. That is, I have arrived. I have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Terrible. He's talking to a rich, a wealthy person who used to be prayerful before. But now he say, I am rich. I am increasing goods. What is the arrival mentality? 
First, it is the inability to stand the test of the blessing. The man was blessed and he failed. The inability to stand the test of the blessing. Also, second, it is the inability to stand the test of success. Inability to stand the test of success. What are we talking about? We are talking about that person who was on fire when there was no money. We are talking about that person who was very committed when they were stranded. That person that came to church when there was no service, no service day. There is a spirituality of adversity that is not a confirmed spirituality until opportunity and prosperity arrives. That is where spirituality is truly confirmed. Did you hear what I just said? There is a spirituality of adversity, a spirituality of poverty, a spirituality of scarcity, where a person is very fireful, very prayerful, does all night by himself, is fasting almost all the time. When there is no food, he converts it to fasting. Abraham Lincoln said, almost anybody can withstand adversity. But if you want to know a person, give them power. Whether it is political power or financial power or positional power, whatever it is, if you want to really know who a person is, tell him, take power. Take one billion. In fact, some people, it's not one billion. It's only 50,000. Then you know who they are. It's local government chairman or the head of the department of, of an organization. Some little money. Then you know who they are. Prayer life dies. God is looking for those who he turned from nothing to billionaires and they are still tonguing three hours a day. And they are still carrying Bible on fire for God. And they are still on the streets evangelizing. And they are not ashamed to carry their big Bible under their arm to the board meetings. And they are not ashamed to tell their occultic business colleagues or contemporaries that they belong to Jesus. Listen to this. Don't forget it for life. When, spiritual, when prosperity destroys spirituality, it invites calamity. When prosperity destroys spirituality, it invites calamity. When your prosperity has destroyed your, your, your spirituality, it must invite for you calamity. In case you are in doubt, ask the prodigal son. Who in Luke chapter 15 and in verse 13, the Bible said, not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took his journey into a far country, far from his father, far from the presence of the one who gave him everything. And he wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Calamity. Calamity. And he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Peak. spiritual prosperity that destroys spirituality and invited calamity. My dear brothers and sisters, opportunity should increase your spirituality. Prosperity should increase your spiritual intensity because now you have more money to buy 
Bible materials to buy resources, more money to, to check yourself into a, 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 a prayer closet but for, for three days, four days, you have enough resources probably to employ yourself and you, you have your time to yourself and to employ other people, you should multiply and increase your spirituality. If you got opportunity and you got spirit and you got prosperity and it reduced your spirituality, it means you don't know what you are after in this life. Hallelujah. The amount of money that can reduce this person's prayer life has not been found. I had visa to maybe 20 countries or 20 something countries at a time where I had no time to travel until it expired. Visa to America, no time to travel. You are facing your work, it expired. That, that is what some people are looking for. Yeah, man, I just came from Los Angeles. And I visited Hollywood. I saw the house of Michael Jackson, where Elvis Presley lived. And I visited Paris. Just hopping all over the world. Because he, he has arrived I, I met a man who said the money he spent traveling all over the world, if he has saved that money, he would have been an, the owner of a bank by now. His contemporaries were bank owners. He told me with his mouth. <laughs> he rose to the, the level of AGM or DGM or GM or something of one of those ancient banks. He, used, he went everywhere. The devil dealt with him. Grounded to zero. Am I communicating at all? What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The reason why God has not blessed so many people is because he doesn't want to lose them. You may not like that, but that's true. He prefers the way you are humble now. <laughs> and the way you are very sincere and very honest and very spiritual and very, very, very committed now, he, he's just happy with you. Because by the time it just increases you small, you're almost not touching the ground anymore. You may be shaking people with one finger. It's a rich man. He has arrived. He can't, he can't talk to brethren anymore. He can't, no pastor, nobody can call him to order. He arrived, amen. It destroys spirituality. The life that was the arrival mentality. Number three is discouragement from delay. The attitude of self-sufficiency, the arrival mentality. Number three is the attitude discouragement from delay before I leave, I leave the last point please understand that anything you did to get you to any realm in God is what you must continue to do to remain there there is nothing like I have fasted enough I have fasted all the fastings I need there is nothing like that if you, if you, if you waited on the Lord, studied the word, you were very, very committed and God saw all of that and took you to a realm of, of spiritual authority or, or financial authority or whatever it is, whatever you were doing before that took you there, you must do it to not just to stay there but do more to remain there and go up. Because if you think the devil was attacking you when you had no money, get some money first. That is when you realize that every new level attracts new devils. Hallelujah. That was very, very important. That was very, very important, the arrival mentality. Number three now is discouragement from delay. The Bible said men ought always to pray and not to faint. There are many translations who translate that to say that people should continue praying and not give up. The New Living Translation, the 
Message Bible, the NIV, and all that. Can you? He said, people should always pray and never give up. People should pray and not give up. I think that is enough even. People must keep praying until the answer comes. He'll hear me. What this means is, when answers delay in coming, people slack in praying. When answers delay in coming, people become slack at the place of prayer. But I want you to understand about five things or six. And it will help you. First, prayer is not just a platform to get things from God. It is a platform to service your relationship with God. God has not given me a child, a wife, a job. I'm not praying anymore. No. Prayer is not just a platform to get things from God. It's a platform to service your relationship with God. So prayer is not just about getting things. Number two, prayer is a platform for the rekindling of spiritual fire and fervency. Spiritual fire and fervency. Especially praying in the Holy Ghost is a platform to set your life on fire. Not just to get things from God. So I am not praying again because I don't, um, I, 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 I have not gotten this answer. That is a waste. Prayer is a platform for the rekindling of spiritual fire. Thirdly, delay with God does not imply refusal. It doesn't imply refusal or denial. Can I go on a little bit further? That you pray and there is delay doesn't mean God has refused or God has denied you. And I want to give you about five understandings regarding delays at times. Are you ready for that? So, if this is 3C, then it is 3C1. Delay does not imply refusal. First, maybe there is a timing issue. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. When there may be a delay, maybe we are dealing with a timing issue. There is a time to every purpose under heaven. Two. Maybe there is a process issue. Because every purpose of God has a process. Joseph dreamt a dream, but he needed 13 years to be processed to reach there. David had an anointing on his head, but he didn't assume the throne until the age of 30. Maybe there's a process issue. Maybe what you are trusting God for is ready for you, but you are not ready for it. Maybe husband is ready for you, but you are not ready as a wife yet. I talked with one young lady the other day, 
And she said, my wife and I were talking, and she said, she is happy that she has not married till now. That she, if she had married like a year or two ago, it would divorce straight. It will, the marriage will, will spoil straight because she knew who she was. She knew who she was. She confessed with her mouth. There's no way it could have worked. Maybe it's a process issue. Maybe God is saying, let me process this person first so that the breakthrough I have for you can last. Thirdly, maybe there is a test of conviction and persistence. Whether you really know what you are up to, do you, a test of conviction and persistence. Job said, I will wait. I will wait until my change come. Job 14, 14. It's a fight, a good fight of faith. Maybe it's a fight that you have been wired to win. Fourthly, maybe there is light or insight failure. Light or insight failure. Maybe more light is needed to confront that darkness. John chapter 1 verse 5, he said the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. A, a, a greater measure of insight from scripture, light from the world to confront that darkness that is confronting your life, maybe. Fifthly, maybe there is a direction issue. Some, a, a strategic step that needed to be taken for a turnaround. Job prayed from Job chapter verse 3 or verse 1 or 2 all the way to Job verse 4, chapter 42. God didn't hear him. There was no answer until he did one thing in chapter, in verse 10 of Job 42. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Maybe there is a strategic action. You have been praying for yourself, but maybe there is something that you need to do differently. Differently. He asked for water. They, 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 they were asking for wine. He, he told them to pour water in the pot. And they did. Wow. Beloved, don't be discouraged from delay. Take, charge your heart with the things you just heard and let delay give way. And I prophesy to somebody, whatever will cause that delay in your life to be over tonight from what you have heard, God shall show it to you in the name of Jesus. God shall give you the direction in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Without a doubt, before we step into the month of August, somebody's delay would have ended already. <laughs> Somebody's saying, but Pastor, August is ending next tomorrow. Yes. God created the whole world in six days. There is nothing he cannot do under 48 hours. Somebody believe that, shout the loudest, amen. <laughs> so discouragement from delay is number three reason people lack spiritual prayer life number four is the life of compromise and guilt the life of compromise and guilt proverbs 28 verse 1 said the wicked flee when no man pursueth but the righteous are bold as a lion sinfulness and prayerfulness are mutually exclusive, diametrically opposed. They are diagonally antagonistic. They can't be present together. Sinfulness and prayerfulness. You can't be sinful 
and be prayerful at the same time. Let me show you three reasons why. One, sinful living makes prayer flow difficult. That is, it is hard. The, the, the prayer struggles to come out of the mouth no matter how hypocritical you are. Sinful living obstructs prayer flow. It obstructs communication. That was why Adam and Eve were hiding from God. They couldn't face God. They couldn't face God. I heard your voice and I was afraid. They ran away from God. It, it, communication wasn't possible. Secondly, sinful living punctures confidence and boldness at the place of prayer. It, it punctures it. And we need boldness, you need confidence to make demands on God where necessary. Because he said, the, the, the wicked flee when no man pursues. Confidence, even if the flow is there, the confidence is not there. And thirdly, Sinful living invites satanic resistance at the place of prayer. That is, Satan resists you directly. It invites satanic resistance. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1, all the way to 3, he talked about Joshua the high priest. Satan stood, who stood before the Lord, and Satan stood at his right hand to resist him. Why? Joshua was putting on a filthy garment. Hallelujah. Please, don't live with a conscience that is not clear. Just don't live with it. Lord, I'm sorry. The way I talked in the afternoon, the way I, the activities, I can, whatever, I, am, I need mercy. I need cleansing. I need forgiveness. And ensure the conscience is clear. And you live like that because when you keep on coming to God, and saying sorry, sorry. Your heart will begin to tell you after a while that you are not serious. Hallelujah. That was number four. Number five is the lack of discipline and diligence. The lack of discipline and diligence. Please, this is our last service for the month, especially for teaching service and I must complete this thing very fast. The lack of discipline and diligence. Diligence brings excellence. Discipline. Under God's destiny. Listen to me. Functional spiritual life requires discipline and diligence. That is a spiritual life that is functioning. I'll give you four scriptures. Genesis chapter 19 verse 27. Abraham got up early in the morning. To the place where he stood. That word stood is present continuous. He was standing, he, stand, he will be standing there permanent. What of David? Psalm 55, verse 17. He said, Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry loud, and he shall hear my voice. There was a routine. There was a schedule. What of Daniel? Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. And when Daniel saw that the decree was sealed, he went and knelt down three times a day as he did as at other times. Somebody say amen. 
the most important things of life require discipline. Education requires discipline. <laughs> Military education, raw discipline. Medical education, edu it requires discipline. Neatness, cleanliness requires discipline. You wake up in the morning, you don't just hit the road without brushing and without bathing. Otherwise, people will avoid you. You know that no matter how busy you are, you bath, you brush. Nobody is too busy to eat food. It doesn't matter how tired you are, you must report for work. And if you are if you're getting tired too frequently and getting sick too frequently, they show you the way out. That's how life is. There are many people who are disciplined about every other thing in their life. But not their spiritual life. What about the development of skill and talent? Discipline. I heard of one of the young men who played the piano more than anybody else in the world. He said he rehearsed on the keyboard for about eight hours every day. I think for about 10 to 15 years. That is how it is on the spiritual journey. Discipline. Where you know that this time of the night you are going to pray. Or this time of the day you are going to pray. Or at least prayer is a daily schedule. Many people lack the discipline. And where there is no discipline, there is no destiny. Where there is no diligence, there is no excellence. Somebody say a loud amen. Number six is lack of fire and passion. Romans 12, 11 said, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Amos 6, 1, he said, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Firefulness equals prayerfulness. Passionate people are prayerful people. Fireful people, they are prayerful people. I'm not going to talk much in this line. But just to say one thing, your intake affects your fire. You know, when you put firewood inside fire, you increase the fire. Am I communicating? When you put nylon, you put trash, paper that, is, that has water inside the fire, all you get is smoke. What are you putting inside you? It determines your fire. There are people who can read all manner of novels, romantic novels, and all manner of garbage inside the system. And they are wondering why they cannot pray. After you sat down on the internet for 12 hours, viewing junk, then you wonder why you cannot pray. And we live in a world today where there is suggestion everywhere. You finish watching that movie that puts some terrible things in your mind. And you do that on a continuous basis. And you wonder why it is affair. your prayer life is. If you can show me your intake, I can determine your output. It's not magical. Garbage in is garbage out. That's computer language. Am I communicating? The Bible said in Proverbs 4 23, say, guard your heart. So you don't allow everything to enter your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of your life. You don't allow everything to, every stuff to enter inside you. You don't allow every stuff to enter inside of you because it determines what comes out of your life. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a louder amen. It's lack of fire and passion. And, and that happens because of what people put into their heart, including music. Do you know mu music carries spirits? It carries the spirit of the singer. 
That's why you hear some songs, you, you, you are weeping. It's coming out of the brokenness of the person singing. Some people listening to music commit suicide. Am I communicating at all? In those days, the days of the hippies, the, the, the rock and roll of those days was associated with a lot of marijuana smoking and a lot of all those very wild and rough and gangster lifestyle because of what they were listening to and the, and the things inside. Definitely those kind of things will not going, is not going to assist you to be more prayerful. I was, they brought a, 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 a girl from Lokoja some time back who was watch, I mean, encountered somebody on the internet or so and initiated her on the spot into the occult realm by encountering on the internet. We live in such world. Be careful what you put inside you because it may affect your outflow. Did somebody get something here tonight? Finally, lack of faith and trust in God. Lack of faith and trust. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, he must believe that God is. You cannot pray to God in unbelief or in doubt or distrust suspecting that God doesn't like you and expect to be answered. Doubting the faithfulness of God and expect to be answered. Or in fact, even pray. Hallelujah. Lack of faith and trust in God. What is the use praying? Whether I pray or I don't pray, it's the same thing. Lack of faith. But let me say this to you. Faith is fired by light. Fired by light. Fired by insight. The more you know, the more confidence. Today I was reading the story of Peter. <laughs> and they said that Herod stretched his hand and took James, beheaded him. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he carried Peter also in the days of the unleavened bread. And he was, he was planning to execute him as their Easter gift. The Bible says just before Easter. And committed Peter to four quaternions. Four quaternions of soldiers. Whatever be the meaning of quaternion of those days. Even if it is a squad of four soldiers... You multiply four by four. That's 16. One little apostle who didn't have a gun. You, you surrounded him with 16 hefty men. With weapons. What are you talking about? That that devil is afraid of something inside Peter. It wasn't about whatever he carried physically. But ab about what Peter carried. He was such a terror. That you give 16 men GPMG to march around and match a tiny apostle who have never hurt a fly into a prison with guns. One man would have been enough. 16. All of them followed him inside prison. Watch him. I'm about to kill him. Hear this. Peter sat down. Two soldiers behind this. Apart from the 16 that, what do you call that thing when they, one stand here and one stand here in a perimeter like that. And they were all standing waiting whether a fellow terrorist will come and remove him. Guards, they just, just perimeter fence or whatever it is. And then two of them, apart from the 16, two of them, the Bible said he sat in between two soldiers inside the prison. That those two soldiers were not enough. Chained with two chains. Sixteen. Two. Then one other soldier man, man the door. How terrified were they with this Peter? You know what Peter did for both them and the devil? He fell asleep. Sleep 
Ask yourself the question. Ask yourself, what can make you sleep in the midst of 16 armed men? Two other armed people near you. Another soldier in front of the door. And they say they will bring you out tomorrow to cut your neck. He slept so till the Bible say the angel came upon him. Please put that on, on, on his, and the angel no no back up. Verse, and behold the angel of the Lord he didn't say he came to him. He came upon. It looks like he arrived from up. <laughs> Bam! Guy was still sleeping. Are you on general anesthesia? <laughs> Look at the next verse. And the angel of the Lord came upon him, light shot. And he smote. He didn't say he tapped him, he hit him. The angel had the knowledge of the depth of the sleep. I need another translation. Of that angel that smote him. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and light shone and he struck Peter. There is still another violent translation I read today. He struck Peter. He said, get up quickly. So that's right. The angel slapped him on the side to awake him and say, quick, get up. The guy was gone. I then realized that when Peter advised us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, the same Peter, he was talking from experience, casting all your care. Upon him, for he cared for you. Lord, why is Peter sleeping like that? Then I realized that Peter saw the master sleeping in the middle of his tomb. He was the master was fast asleep in his own case. Water entered the boat. Water was in his legs. The boat was sinking. His leg was inside water. He wasn't awake. And I realized that this was not the first time Peter was in, in prison and an angel brought him out. And Peter must have concluded, the last time I didn't do anything before he brought me out. This time I don't need to do anything. I will sleep on them. And I saw him sleeping, so let me still sleep. Anything that will happen, let it be. When I saw that, he, he shifted me to another level. That one of the highest realms of faith is to sleep on the devil. <laughs> hey! Stand up on your feet with a shout of praise. Peter, you too can stand now. <laughs> hey! Look at your neighbor say, don't allow the devil to cause you to lose your sleep. You saw a thing like that today and there was a storm around you. What will you do? To hell with you, devil. To hell with you, devil. You couldn't stop my master, you can't stop me. You couldn't hinder my master, you can't hinder me. You couldn't resist my master, you can't resist me. I pray, I prophesy upon somebody here. That revelational light that will give you genuine sleep is coming your way tonight. That will make you to sleep on that demon of barrenness. That demon of, 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 of joblessness. That demon of singleness. That demon of affliction. That, that revelation. That light. That insight. That will cause you to genuinely sleep on that devil. Is coming your way today. You believe, shout the loudest. Amen.
Be upstanding. Be upstanding. I couldn't believe how tiny Peter was. They thought that he was equivalent to those number of soldiers. And yet he showed them what they will never be, forget for life. He slept on them. Maybe Smith Wigglesworth read that. You heard of Smith Wigglesworth? One day, he heard noise in his parlor, living room. Noise everywhere, noise everywhere. He came and saw the devil, horn, the real devil, the one you see in picture, saw the devil with horns sitting on his rocking chair. Rocking. He looked at that devil and hissed. Devil, are you the one? I thought it was something more important. He went back to the bed and slept. Ah. Papa Yedeko said when he read that, when he read that thing, that was when his fear of the devil died. That the man went to the bedroom and slept. And the devil didn't follow him there to kill him there. That shows the yeshiousness of that devil. The, you, the, the weakness of that devil. Lift up your hands. We are going to pray some prayers tonight. Take it from the last point. First of all, say, Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word to me today. I receive light, insight, revelation from your word. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and speak to God. The name of Jesus. One prayer. Say, Father, Father. I'd like you to pray violently and aggressively. Say, Father, Father. That, revelation, that revelation, that light, that, light, that, insight, that insight, that will cost me, that will cost me to, sleep on the devil. to sleep on the devil. And I wake with results. And I wake with results. Did you hear that? That revelation, that revelation that will cause me, will cost me to, sleep to sleep on the devil and I wake with resource. Send, Send it to me. Now listen to me. Peter didn't just sleep like that and that was and, and then um, he, he continued in the prison. When he woke up from that, in fact, when they woke him up from that sleep, that was the end of the siege. Angel said, walk in front of me. In fact, Angel walked in front of him. As he came, the first gate opened on his own accord. Iron gate that led to the city open of his own accord. When he brought him to the city center, he disappeared. Peter, proceed anywhere you want, do what you want fearlessly. 
When you go to rest, God goes to work. And the rest is a function of the revelation. The rest is a function of the revelation. The rest is a function of the revelation. There is something you will see that will put you to rest. And when God sees you at rest, he moves to, move, to walk. He moves into action. He moves into action. He moves into action to change your story. He moves into action. I believe with that, without a doubt that God is moving into action and changing somebody's story. Lift up your two hands and say, Father. Father. Say after me, say, Father. Father. I connect with that revelation that, with that, revelation. that will connect me with rest. That will connect, with that rest. That will connect me with rest. Connect with rest. And from this rest, I see results. I see your manifestations. Open my eyes. Open my ears. Open my understanding to see the light, to see the revelations that will impart rest and bring results. I receive it now. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, pray. So shall it be in Jesus' precious name. The Lord has answered us. Get ready for encounters overnight. Get ready for divine visitations overnight. I was very bothered in the middle of the night over the situation of our nation. The megalocious realm of corruption. Very, very frightening dimension of poverty. Frightening dimension of insecurity. The Southern Kaduna and other parts of the country are permanently in the news as it is now because of ravages in the nation. Talk of bandits in, 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 in Katsina and Trying to remember the capital. Gusu is the capital of that place. Zamfara State and several of the places around the country. Talking of bandits, talking of terrorists, talking of kidnappers, talking of headsmen. In one country. From north to south, everywhere. You know, when you are like, by the privilege of God, where we are, people, they send messages on a permanent basis. My uncle, my somebody has been kidnapped in Asaba. See that are kidnapped in this place. They are kidnapped. Hey, please pray, pray. Everywhere. Lord, what shall we do? He said there will be intervention in the afternoon. And, I, and I'm wondering, what is afternoon? So I, I, I went to three scriptures that I was shown, and I'll show it to you now. We shall pray. Intervention from heaven. First Samuel chapter 11, verse 9. Look at what he said. He said, and they said unto the messengers that came, thus shall you say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, tomorrow, by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. This is what I understood by what he said to me. That this situation is not permitted to reach the night. The night is where the darkness is at its peak. The night is where, we, I mean, the night is where you, you cannot see anything worse than worse. The night is where the agenda of evil is concluded. The night is where evil has, has finalized its plot. You shall not reach that night. Father, this is, <laughs> the weather is very hot. I was talking to the other, somebody the other day and he said, I am afraid to travel now. I should have come to see you since, but I'm afraid to travel on our roads now because of the way things are. Father, the sun is hot over Nigeria. 
send us help. He said, by the time the sun is hot, help shall come. Send us help. By enemies, lift your voice and say, Father, the sun is hot over our nation. Send us help. The sun is hot over our nation. Send us help. The sun is hot over our nation. Send help to Nigeria. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. The sun is hot over Nigeria. Lord, send us help. Heaven's intervention. Heaven's intervention. Heaven's intervention. Heaven's intervention. Heaven's intervention. In the name of Jesus. Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 3. And I said unto them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. The, the place was in siege, locked up. But when the sun is hot, the land must open up. Father, the sun is hot. Open our gates. The sun is hot. Let this siege be over. Lift your voice and say, Father, the sun is hot over Nigeria. The sun of insecurity. The sun of kidnapping. The sun of terrorism. The sun of poverty. The sun of corruption. Is hot over Nigeria. Open our gates. Open our gates. Father, we ask that this siege be over forever. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Let this siege be over. 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 Let this seed be over. In the name of Jesus. Final scripture tonight before we take the communion. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham, unto him. Genesis 18, 1. In the plains of Mama, and he sat in the tent door, in the heat of the day. Father, the land is hot. Appear to us. You will take it from your own life to our families and communities. The sun is hot. Appear. Visit us as a people. Visit us as a nation. There is heat over our land. There is there is heat over our land. Lift up your voice, your hands, and your voice, and say, Father, the sun is hot over Nigeria. Father, send us help. Break this siege. Visit us. Visit my life. Visit my family. Visit the church in this heat of the sun. Give us a visitation. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. A visitation, a visitation, a visitation, a visitation.
Father, the sun is hot over our nation. The sun is hot over our land. The sun is hot over our nation. Give us a visitation. Give us a visitation. As a nation, as a people, as a country, give us a visitation. The sun is hot over our land, over our nation. Give us a visitation. A visitation. A visitation. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and thank him. These prayer points have been issued. I would say we should continue to pray until the answer comes. Let the prayer continue. God will give you, give us help in this heat of the sun. He will open our, the prison that we are in, he will open our gates in this heat of the sun. And give us a visitation. It is prophetic praying. And I want you to pray with authority. Lift up your hands everywhere you are. Before we take the communion. That's right. Tonight as a communion of divine intervention. For our lives. For our families. For our nation. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimony, by your blood, oh Lord, by your blood, by your blood, you said the captives, who will take the song? Daniel, favor. All right, you are here. By your blood, you set the captives free. Lift up your hands everywhere you are. While we are doing that, anywhere you are tonight, pick up your Bibles and pick up your bags. You need to surrender your life to Jesus to have your sins forgiven. You want an addiction broken over your lives. Whatever it is in your life that must be broken tonight, quickly come forward and let's pray for you. Carry your Bibles, carry your bags, and quickly come forward and don't be the last to come. Be the first to come. You want to rededicate yourself to God, also come forward. I give you the count of seven while the communion takes position. One, two, oh, by your blood, by your blood, oh Lord, by your blood. Place your right hand on your chair. Please, church, take your seat one minute. And pray this prayer after me. All of you on your standing and say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of help. Come into my life. Make me a new person. Today, I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. From today, I go forward ever. Backward never. The grace to live for you, Lord, I receive it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken off your life and the grace to live for God be released upon you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Right. Counselors are going to go with you. Please go with them. They'll 
discuss with you on what to do to be established in God and also how to follow God in the way. God bless you as you go with them. You have your communion already? Can you lift it up? Say, Father, I receive your intervention through this communion. The grace to apply and employ the light I received today. I received that grace in the name of Jesus. Light, revelation that will lead me to rest and lead me to results. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, by your blood, intervene in our nation. The sun is hot. Give us help. Open our prisons. Give us a visitation over our nation by the reason of this communion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Say a louder amen.